Hello, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. With this video, I'm going to look at the valuations of leading lithium producers in an attempt to determine whether we've been in a bubble and whether or not that bubble has recently burst. Importantly, I plan to keep this particular video very simple and straightforward. I'm only going to use the adjusted operating earnings metric. However, I have looked at these companies through all these other metrics, including EBITDA, operating cash flow, etc. But what I'm really doing here is attempting to focus on valuation and and whether or not you can identify whether overvaluation is an obvious mistake that can be avoided or not. I'm going to start out looking at Albemarle Corporation, one of the leading lithium producers and a specialty chemicals manufacturer. It's got about almost an $11 billion market cap, very little debt. But here's what I want you to notice. This orange line on this graph represents a P-E ratio of 15. The blue line represents a P-E ratio of 16, which is kind of a what I'll call reasonable valuation corridor or references. The point is that if you look back historically, as far as I can go here, back to 1998, you will clearly see that the stock price really tracked very consistently with the company's operating earnings. And then you can see short periods of time where overvaluation reverted to the mean, as well as periods of time where undervaluation reverted to the mean. But what you saw since the advent of the you know Tesla hype and story and electric cars and just, you know, lithium ion batteries in general for all other purposes. We've seen this huge rise in stock price of Albemarle, which a company that normally trades at a normal PE in the, let's say, 15 to 16 range, and occasionally you get a chance to buy it. You would have had a chance to buy it at much lower valuation. Suddenly, we see the valuations get up to this 30 PE level we saw by September of last year. And then since that time, we've had a rather significant drop in the company's stock price. Now, for the period of time being measured here, you're looking at about a 30%, 29.5% total drop. Um, it's an annualized m- minus 67%, but the point is that you can see just by the picture that's a clear drop. Now, it's still above the orange line. So, as I said in the title of this article, have we seen the bubble burst? Has it completely burst? Or is Albemarle just currently leaking what I like to call rarefied air? Rarefied air is when a stock's up here in the stratosphere beyond anything that it has normally done. But there are a couple of points here I want to make very quickly. One is the correlation between price and earnings, as well as EBITDA and all these other metrics, is very clear. Um, You see when the earnings were weak, the price was weak. You see when the earnings were strong, the price was strong. And what you have here is a very exciting forecast for future growth. 2017 was a very good year with high growth averaging almost 29%. And we're forecast to see double-digit growth rates for the next couple of years. And you see this nice trend line. And now we see the price moving back there. The question is, has it gotten there yet? Now, I don't particularly think this company has become attractive yet. But I certainly believe it's more attractive than it was in September of last year. But the key is, if you just run the numbers here logically, if you bought it today to 21 PE, and it did go down to either it's 16 or 15 PE, and I'll, I'll use the more positive one, this would mean about a 3% rate of return, including dividends over the next couple of years. Um, Not a loss, but obviously not a real attractive rate of return for a company that is proven to be cyclical over time, has a pretty good dividend record, a pretty good dividend growth record. I think it's important to look at the fact that this company has increased their dividend on average by about 11% per year. But nevertheless, I don't believe this company has come down to fair value. I think it's getting closer, and it's certainly better than it was, again, as I said a year ago. But I would still like to see some additional reversion, if you will, to the mean, or I'd like to see a slightly better valuation. Somewhere in the 15 to 17 PE ratio might make this stock attractive. And if the bad news continues with the Teslas of the world, et cetera, or any hint of bad news comes out, you know, if you ever get a chance to buy this at 10 or 11 times earnings again, I would jump on it. Now, next, I would like to contrast Albemarle's history and price action with FMC. Now, it's very similar. This is a slightly different company. And by the way, as a side note, this company does plan to separate their lithium business. And I think that's an important thing to consider if you decide to actually want to research these stocks. But once again, you'll notice that price tracked earnings very closely, and there's always volatility in price, but it gets above and below, just like I showed with Albemarle. And then we had this rather significant drop in earnings in calendar 2015, followed by a slight recovery. And then, of course, just like we saw with Albemarle, the company's stock price had this parabolic advance. You know, this is a pretty incredible return from basically trough to peak. 
you know, that's 146% gross rate of return since February of 2016, and that's a 73% annualized rate of return. And of course, that's before we've had this recent correction. Now, again, they're going to spin off their lithium business. The company's earnings growth is forecast to be extremely high in 2018, but that is a forecast. I want to make that clear. And growth going forward still looks pretty good. So if you're looking at FMC in contrast to what we saw with Albemarle, future returns could be very attractive. So this might not be the most optimum time to buy it. But on the other hand, it might not be a, a valuation that would cause you losses. But keep in mind, there's a lot of uncertainty relative to what the uh, spinoff will be and, and so on when they actually um, carve out and, and go take their lithium business public. And that might be a real smart move. But as always, you know, caveat emptor, you know, do your own homework before you look at it. But the real key is that high valuation like we see here with FMC, and I might add perhaps more pronounced with Albemarle, you just see this complete disconnect from intrinsic value, which would be pointing down to these orange triangles. These would be the prices that this stock should trade at. It Was it trading at a normal or more reasonable rational PE ratio? And then of course, we see this immediate drop. So this is my argument that I've made many times before. When a company gets excessively overvalued like Albemarle was here, it becomes very, very vulnerable, even the hint of bad news. Fundamentals haven't really changed very much. In fact, they actually are improving. But what you're dealing with here is the headwinds of significant overvaluation that caused this roughly 30% drop. So this is Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. I think the lithium industry is attractive long term, but I would be very careful to wait for clear and attractive valuations before I allocated my money. Thanks for watching.